Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Long time no see for episodes of CSGO News, but welcome back guys to my house. If you guys can tell, we are now back in the basement, no longer in the apartment, so thank you guys all for the constant support. And of course, welcome back to another weekend recap of CSGO News. A lot going on this past weekend, which we're going to talk about, and of course, all those stories are time marked down below. Our first one though, involving Complexity and their brand new roster, of course, Stannis, Law, and Shazam. They of course were added from Optic Gaming. That's a whole new story over there, which we talked about in the past few weeks. But apparently Complexity have actually dropped out for the remaining four matches, the remaining matches for ECS this current season. Now on top of that as well, it was a must make decision because if you guys read the article itself, they had to drop those four matches to actually make their ESL Pro League relegation matches. Uh, that scheduling of course that they're going to be traveling to the UK to compete in those matches and of course very inconvenient there because to in order to avoid relegation for ECS, they would have had to win those four matches. Of course, they will now be going to ECS relegation and they had to make that choice guys in order to have a chance to actually qualify for both those leagues in the next season. So instead of having to win their last four matches guys, they're going to be forfeiting their last matches against SK Gaming and E United and of course they'll be doing ECS relegation matches now in the future which they're probably going to be doing anyway and this way they can actually play their ESL Pro League relegation matches and they'll probably be able to win those as well and have a solid chance to actually make ESL Pro League and ECS next season but of course a lot of the comments out there this does look bad for ECS these guys are of course choosing ESL Pro League relegation matches and forcing themselves to be relegated in ECS in order to make that but I think it doesn't look too bad because of course it's a smart team decision and it pretty much if they wanted a chance to make both leagues next season is a choice they had to make. And also in breaking and shocking news, yes, we have Mike Lilly's new team. He's been playing with them for quite some time. They were formerly known as Enyoy, which is a weird name in itself. They've now been signed, though, to an official organization, and that is actually Digital Chaos. So, of course, their roster on screen. My only words about this, guys, is, of course, this is actually a very similar roster, I believe. I think it's three of the five members they had for the last minor they played in, the last minor qualifiers they actually played in for, I believe, it was actually PGL. They did not do too well. I'm pretty sure they actually tried three times with a very similar similar Swedish roster here and they failed to make that minor itself. Now will they make the minor this time around? Is that the main reason why this, this team actually got signed to an organization? They actually had of course some stipulations if they do have a chance to make the minor which they of course are a powerful roster and they definitely do have a shot at it. Will they make the minor this time around? That's what I'm hoping for guys but yes Mike Lilly's journey continues as he has now joined or I guess you could say an official organization for another time. I think it's like the 19th or the 20th or the 21st time. I wish them the best of luck. Do I have faith in them this time around? though it's hard to but I hope they do the best they can and of course a very powerful roster just the minor system is tough. And I, just, I don't want to make you guys think that I hate Mike Lilly. I actually love him very much. I, that, okay, that sounds kind of weird. I like the generally the teams he plays for, his personality, his attitude, but he has joined so many teams. And I do want to really quickly clarify, I'm not hating on the guy or their team. It's a very, very solid roster, but the minor system is very difficult. For those of you guys who do not know, I think for this time around, for the major, for the face it major, there's going to be four chances to qualify for the minor. And when it comes to qualifications, it's over a thousand teams. Generally, I think it's a thousand and twenty-eight teams is the breakdown that actually join it. And for the first four or five rounds, it's all best of ones. If you lose one match, you are done. So the minor system is definitely not an easy route to go, no matter how powerful you are. Especially if you look at the past few months here, we've had top CSGO teams losing to no-name teams out of nowhere. So the minor system is definitely very difficult for a team like that to go through. You have to win several, several rounds in a row before you get the best of threes. So it's a very difficult route to go on. Now, very uh, next on our CSGO News show here, guys, a weird thing I came across on YouTube. Thanks to the guy who actually sent me the link to this stream. Maybe I'll link it down below for all of you guys. I was wandering YouTube and all of a sudden found a CSGO streamer out there trying to become Mr. Beast. I don't know exactly where this came about, but apparently he was actually challenged to say Gamdum 5,000 times on live stream. If he did so, he would be given $10 on Gamdom as a code. So the guy actually failed his first time saying this 5,000 times in a row. He went on to say Gamdom 5,500 times and yes, he was given $10 on Gamdom's website. I don't know about you guys, but that seems like a pretty good deal for Gamdom. This guy literally sat there for a couple hours saying Gamdom and I, I can guarantee you guys this has definitely crossed my mind as an idea for a live stream sometime soon, but my internet here is pretty bad. But it, that'd be a funny idea for me to say something 10,000 times for $10. And also, no real surprise, guys, we did have Cloud9's very own Nothing, or I guess I could say former Nothing. He did tweet out this. Apparently, his contract is up. First, it was Shroud back in April, so it made sense. He was soon to follow, guys. Now, we do have Cloud9's, I, I keep on saying that, Nothing is no longer a part of Cloud9's stream team, and he'll be going off on his own, hopefully to a full-time streaming career, or maybe even coming back sometime soon in the future. No one really knows, and I think everyone's kind of hopeful for him to come back sometime soon to some kind of old veteran roster, maybe Shroud. I guess Shroud said he'll never come back to CSGO. He's officially retired, but 
but people still wondering where Nothing's career is going to go. I don't think he's going to be a full-time streamer. I think we'll see him one more time playing for another team out there. The question is, though, who will he play with? So on top of that as well, we did have Envious making a very curious move, but also no big surprise here. Finally releasing their coach, Malik. If you guys remember, Malik actually joined, I believe, just over a year ago, I want to say, and they've only ever won one event with him. I think it was a DreamHack Atlanta event as well. They finished off Team Heroic over there, but that was their one event win, and that was actually back in July of 2017. So no real success for Malik there, and of course, Envious's recent struggles have been pretty extreme, and on top of that, guys, with the release of their coach, you have to be curious, are they going to release any players? sometime soon and of course we cannot forget about the trio out there shocks existence and of course Smith's gonna be that trio looking for two other players for the new French team and will they pick up some envious players will they pick up one envious player maybe two no one knows the future of that but yes envious has now released their coach Malik who knows the future of this roster it seems to be deteriorating very slowly and very last in today's episode of CSK news and probably the most important we did have John McDonald a valve employee actually respond to the community and our questions out there and give us some time on Twitter so first off I do want to thank John for actually replying on Twitter Twitter, and if you guys have not heard his voice in the past few weeks, he's been very active on VACnet, the Valve anti-cheat system, and he's been probably the one who's been speaking most publicly about that, so it's really no surprise he's the one that actually takes the time to take the Twitter to answer your questions. So of all the things he actually answered, I'll list off some of the things that are most important in my opinion, and of course, I'll link down below the Reddit, the Reddit forums as well for you guys to look at the full series of questions he did answer. The first one I thought was most curious, though, he, is he actually said 128 tick servers or 128 tick servers are most likely not coming soon. He made it sound as if they were actually not near as important as people found it to be and actually in fact it would be hard for players to keep up with 128 tick servers so of course many of you guys know perfect world they launched pretty much right away with 128 tick servers and we haven't heard much about it ever since then so apparently according to john mcdonald and the valve team over there 128 tick servers are not the focus and don't expect them anytime soon now also on top of that very importantly there is no estimated timeline for ui panorama which would fix a lot of issues inside the game most notably though a lot of the stutter issues when you open the in-game menu in game. Uh, people were having a lot of lag issues with that kind of thing. Uh, more importantly, also other other big fixes that would actually help in the game itself, but apparently according to John McDonald, the Valve team does not want to give us a deadline for UI Panorama because quote-unquote, they would most likely miss the deadline and piss people off. So that kind of is a bit weird because of course, he also went to stress that the, the, during the year of 2017, that was their main stress, that was their main focus, and we still have apparently no big headway in terms of launching it itself. So would I expect it for 2018? The way he sounds it, most likely not. Also, another big note, I could have made the title of this video, this, this next question alone, guys. Apparently, his comment on the I buy power situation, do not expect any I buy power players or former members, and mainly being swag at this point, and also, of course, maybe Steel as well. The other others not really mattering too much at this point in time. They will never be allowed to play at Valve sponsored events, or in that case, Valve majors. According to the Valve team and John McDonald, they have not changed their opinion on the matter yet, which is uh, kind of astounding to see. Now, of course, he, he wouldn't have said anything there of, of any place. He probably wouldn't have replied to a Twitter comment and said, oh, we changed our mind. They're going to be unbanned. But still, it's kind of astounding for him to say they have still, after this much time, guys, they have still not changed their mind on the IBA power matter. And that does mean swag will never be at a major again. And of course, the re remaining members as well, which is kind of just a, kind of a, a sad thing to see. As on top of that, very lastly, guys, uh, one that I thought was very curious as well. They still have only 35 employees, or around that, around 35 employees working on the game of CS:GO, which seems like an astoundingly low number. But I mean, I guess they're doing. Uh, they're not. I don't even know what to say about that. If anyone can comment down below, I believe Dota 2 has way more employees working for them, or at least they used to. But maybe I'm totally wrong about that. But yeah, that was... Anyway, thank you, John McDonald, for answering our questions. I do appreciate the feedback. I'm sure you guys do as well. It's, it's, it's freaking awesome to see a Valve employee finally responding to the community in this kind of sense. Although it was kind of unofficial, it was nice to see. And very lastly, guys, and 1.5% girls, based on my YouTube analytics, please zoom in or just focus on... I need to get this off my chest, guys. I'm working on some new YouTube content, and I appreciate you guys who watch it. You don't have to. You don't, you don't ever have to watch my videos, guys. I know YouTube notifications have been working for half of you. They've been not working for the other half. I really don't care about that. I, I, do, I do care about this though, is making content that I like, and it will be CSGO based content. So I'm going to give you guys the idea, please comment down below if you want to see it. I'm already working on episode number one, I'm going to take tomorrow and probably a couple days off to work on this first episode to get just right. It's going to be a YouTube series, I'm not sure what to call it. My main idea right now is maybe to say, um, you want skins, question mark, and then have it be like episode one. So like, so you want CSGO skins, episode one, or I don't know what to call it, leave a comment down below, please help me out here guys. Pretty much the premise of the YouTube series is going to be people who DM me on Twitter asking for skins who give me crazy stories as to why they deserve those skins. And let me tell you exactly why I want to do this is because 
a particular guy out there actually messaged me on, on, on Twitter and I didn't believe him at first, but his story turned out to be really true and really inspiring and also very emotional. And I'm going to give him skins and I want to make that episode one. And then for the other episodes out there, I want to make you guys send me crazy Twitter DMs, crazy stories. You can make the stories up. They can be real stories. And you guys try and convince me to give you skins with your crazy stories. I then, for every episode, I show you guys four, you know, maybe three to five stories and I choose one that wins the skins. Now this would be completely unsponsored right now I can tell you guys I am not making pretty much any money off YouTube but this just sounds fun this first episode has been such an emotional like I it's been so emotional so far talking to this guy and finding out his real life story and why he why he wants this knife or this skin and I, I just want to do this as a series I don't care about the money anymore I'm trying to look for a real life job so hopefully I can do this for fun anyway leave a comment down below guys help me out I will reply to comments today I want to make this a series what should it be called what should I do with it and I'm just I'm so excited to share it with you guys so as always welcome back to CSGO news guys I will see you all in a couple days some more and if you guys did enjoy please leave a like and more, more importantly though leave a comment down below I will see you all soon. My name is Jake Murray like you and I will see you all next time. Oh, here's a blooper by the way. Goodbye. Hello everybody. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to I guess another episode of CSGO News. A long time since I've seen you guys last for our last episode and if you guys can tell we are now in a...